Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, and today we're going to be continuing our work in 11-1 reading line plots. We're going to be using workbook page 595 as our guided notes today, so make sure that you have that page out in front of you. All right, this is the homework and practice page. So let's take another look. The data table shows the distances that Frida ran over a period of 17 days. Good for her. I haven't been out running yet. I have been walking though. A line plot shows data along a number line. Each dot represents one day. An outlier is a data point that is very different from the rest of the data. And so we've talked a lot about that, an outlier. And so let's do that first. Which distance is an outlier? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on Frida's daily running distance. I'm a little jealous of Frida, I'll be honest. And it looks like there is one dot that is kind of separated from the other dots right here, right? So it looks like five miles is the outlier, right? Because it's not close to these other distances over here. So she must have been feeling really good on that day because she ran five whole miles. The rest of the days seem to be kind of scattered here. And it looks like these are all of the distances and it shows how many days she ran those distances. So like a half a mile, she did that twice. So that's why there's two dots, right? All right, let's take a look down at the bottom. We're now talking about a different line plot. So these questions here are going to be talking about the weights of puppies aw, at a pet store. All right. I feel like now's a really good time to get a puppy because we're home so often. I don't know how many of you guys are begging your parents for puppies, but I know we have a few members of our family who are doing the same. All right, so these are pounds of puppies. I guess the weight, how much they weigh. And puppies are tiny, so they probably just weigh a little bit. So it looks like, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five puppies weigh only three pounds. I mean, that's really tiny. I bet they're super cute. Um, and then let's see, there's one puppy that weighs seven pounds. Oh, there's one puppy that, now let's see, how much would he weigh? It's between the 12 and the 13. So I would say that that would be like 12 and a half, or now that we know decimals, we could say 12.5 for that little guy there, or should I say big guy? All right, number one, identify any outliers in the data set. Well, this big guy over here, this 12 and a half pounder puppy is probably um, the outlier because look how far away from he, he is, right? So I am going to say that the puppy that is 12 and a half pounds, and we abbreviate uh, pounds LBS, um, would be definitely the outlier. Maybe he's like, um, like, what are some of those big dogs? Those Great Danes or... I have a neighbor who has a giant dog. I mean, this dog is big. I don't really, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a big one. Which weight is the most common? Well, the most puppies are about three pounds. So I would say three pounds is the most common. How many more puppies weighed three pounds than seven pounds? They love to ask these how many more questions. It signals to me subtraction. So how many more puppies weighed three pounds than seven pounds? These are the two that I'm comparing, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five puppies that weighed three pounds. And there's only one puppy that weighed seven pounds. So my answer would be four puppies or four more puppies. And how many puppies weighed less than seven pounds? So here's seven, and here's anything to the left would be less. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten puppies. And my last question is, what is the total weight of all of the puppies weighing less than six pounds? So less than six would be all of these guys right here. And they want the total weight. Okay, so I could solve this by do, using my properties. Let's see, there's three puppies times, or I'm sorry, not three puppies, three pounds 
times one, two, three, four, five, right? And then I have um, plus, I have four times one, two, three, right? Plus, I guess I can, I really should have had my parentheses over there. Plus five pounds, right? And there was two of those. And what does that give us? So, sorry about that. I have three times five would be 15, plus four times three would be 12, plus five times two, which is 10. And if I add that all up, what do I get? Let's see, I think it would be 37 pounds. All right, and so that would be the total weight of all the puppies that are less than six pounds. Pretty nice. All right, let's flip that paper over and let's try these. And this is, again, I would really like it if you guys could stop or pause the video and uh, do this on your own and then kind of come back to see if you got the right answers. Um, that's really would be the best use of your time. All right, so now we're talking about the height of students in Miss Jackson's class. So these are how tall her students are. She has one kid that's four foot tall. Uh, one, two, three, four kids that are about five feet tall. You know, I only wet, I'm only, um, I think like five, three is how tall I am. So like, I feel like she must teach, you know, I don't know, maybe seventh or eighth grade maybe because she has some pretty tall kids. Oh, maybe not, maybe lower than that. Well, anyway, that's probably not the question. Let's see, which height is the most common among the students in Miss Jackson's class? So the most common height, the most dots, seems to be right here. So that would be four and two fourths or four and a half feet tall. That's the most common. And is there an outlier for the data in this line plot? And I'll be honest, like if I'm looking, like there really isn't anything that is you know, kind of set itself aside or different um, or that varies from the other heights. So I'm going to say no, because there's nothing that's far away. All right. And now I'm going to change my focus of my line plot to the heights of Hal's plants. Hal must like plants and he grows some plants at home and he measures how tall they are. All right, good for you, Hal. All right, so he's growing some plants. He has a lot of plants. Wow, look at all those dots. And some are three inches tall and some are three and a quarter inches tall and some are three and a half inches tall. He even has two of them that are four inches tall. Good job, Hal. So based on the line plot, how many more, how many more plants are less than three and two fourths inches than are greater than three and two fourths inches? Explain. All right. These kinds of questions can be tricky um, just based on the language that they're using. But if you go slow and reread, you're going to be like, oh, I get that. So less than three and two fourths. So let's see. Here's three and two fourths. So less would be this way. So these would be all of the plants that are less than three and two fourths. And how many are there? Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten. Okay. Minus, because how many more? Um, and now we want greater than three and two fourths. So greater than three and two fourths would be these guys. So that'd be four. And when you subtract ten minus four, you are going to get the answer of six. So six more plants would be your answer. So not too hard after all. Now they want us to write a question that can be answered by using the line plot. And then they want us to give the answer. All right, um, I don't know, maybe we could ask, and there's lots of questions that we could ask, but maybe we'll do um, how many plants were measured in all, right? Does seem like a lot. All 
And if we were going to ask that question, we would add everything up. So I remember that this was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So my answer would be 20 plants. Hmm. I could also ask, this is a common question, like what was the difference between the um, tallest and the shortest plant? And if I was going to do that, it, the answer would be four minus three. So it would be one inch would be the answer if that was my question. Okay. All right. These questions down below um, are kind of spiraling back to a few of the things that we learned, but also using a line plot to help us. So it's talking about the amount of flour used in cookie recipes. Have you guys been like doing a lot of maybe baking over this quarantine. I know I've made some pumpkin bread. I've made an apple pie. I'm doing, we're making brownies almost every day. Uh, yeah, lots of baking. So the number of recipes is represented by these dots here. And these are the cups of flowers. Okay, so how many recipes use two cups of flour or more? Mm. So here's two cups and over to the right would be more. So it would really be all of these, right? Two cups or more. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would say seven recipes. So C would be my correct answer. And the last question for today, how many recipes are represented by the line plot? Like in all, I guess. So we had seven here. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So my answer would be choice D. And it's as simple as that. Now it's your turn to go on to our Google Classroom. And today you're going to be completing some line plot slides. Please follow the directions and work your hardest because this might be something that I end up grading. All right, good luck everybody and have a wonderful day.